Patch is actually a threat, in my opinion, to all of us, because he challenges all of us to give more. And, I mean, we have a society that's built on me, 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 you know, how can I be prettier, happier, more successful? What can I get? The bigger boat, the bigger house. So he, he's a threat to all of us because he's a radical revolutionary in terms of his way of thinking. He believes it's about giving and not getting. And I believe we've built a society uh, far too much, and I'm, you know, uh, guilty as charged, but it's more about getting than giving. So I can understand why anyone, whether it's a lawyer, a doctor, a uh, uh, or a computer analyst could be threatened by what Patch has to say because he says there's more magic in me giving something to you than in you buying or getting something to me so um, I think it's very threatening but I think that's superficial I think it's also extraordinarily liberating because I just think it's uh, it's a better way to live I didn't want a goofy doctor movie it's uh, there's no message and and I love the goofy part but I the world definitely needs images from the media that are positive and that are that have some encouragement to follow your dreams and some stimulation to help and to to bring hope to our society. I'd like to leave. Hunter, we'll have to discuss this at your scheduled time. I'm leaving. And have you thought about what you'll do? I want to help people. Last night with Rudy, I connected to another human being. I want more of that. I want to learn about people. I want to help them with their troubles. That's what I do. But you suck at it. Patch's concerns about Hollywood types and about getting involved in an industry that was really about exploitation and about uh, uh, taking the kind of going to the lowest common denominator, if you will, were very real. My book came out, had a fabulous interview on NPR. I, my mug got on the front page of USA Today. And that week, oh, Ron Howard called me and five or six producers. I come out. All this lineup, and I'm going, oh God, oh God, oh God, what's happening to me? I take up one offer, and I, I won't say who it was, but I, the, I actually was lining them up. I was going, okay, I'm gonna, I need this hospital. The first one I come out for, it was everything that the player was all about, everything oily about the profession. I come out there, they pick me up in a Rolls Royce, put me up in probably the nicest and most expensive hotel. I mean, the seduction was working to the max. They take me over to the office, and there were four or five people. They all had the gold chains, and the there wasn't a real human being in the room. I could just see they were just seeing dollar signs, and, and I wasn't a human. I was, I was a product, like a candy bar or something. And I, I said, get me out of here. Get me out of here. This is not me. He called me and he said, I've got this book out and some people are beginning to express interest in it, people from your industry, and I don't know if I can trust them. And I know you. What do you think we try to do something together? I said, Mike, please help me. I, 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 I need help and I don't want to, I don't want to totally sell out. So he says, okay, I'll read the book and see what's possible and he read it and says I want to do the movie we want to tell a story that has to do with the medical establishment and use you use the patch Adams character as the as the uh, uh, the individual the uh, protagonist in this story and to show how the dehumanization has occurred show how the desensitization has occurred and show how one nonconformist can sort of turn things over and he loved that idea. Certainly what I told Mike was, Mike, it has to build our hospital. How can we have a movie about our life and spend the huge sums that movies make and not have it build our hospital? We'll use humor to heal pain and suffering. Doctors and patients will work side by side as peers. There'll be no titles, no bosses. People will come from all over the world to fulfill their dream of helping other people. There'll be a community where joy is a way of life, where learning is the highest aim, where love is the ultimate goal. Huh? You have all that? Yeah, not verbatim, but the overall insanity's intact. That's why you have to help me with this. Patch, no. Oh, yes. No. Yes. No. I know it's not going to be an easy road, but you said anything worth doing is difficult. Look, um, I'm not like you, Patch. I want the white coat. I want people to call me doctor more than anything. I want the recognition. And you get it every day in the eyes of patients you're helping. The studio thought that this was an interesting idea and knew that from their perspective, it had to be what they called an A movie or no movie at all. 
they thought he was an, a quite extraordinary character, but not necessarily one that was going to sit well with an audience. So they knew that they were going to need to have big time talent attached to it to be able to package this and sell it as a major motion picture. Well, the first time I actually heard of the name Patch Adams was when I was working on The Nutty Professor with Steve Odekirk. He was writing the movie Patch Adams. Uh, he took a break to work on The Nutty Professor with me. But I didn't hear about it again for about two years. And then when I finished Liar Liar, the, uh, Universal sent me the script that had been sitting around for about a year. And uh, a young executive named Kev Kevin Misher sent me the script. And I read it the first day uh, off from Liar Liar. Uh, and I laughed and I cried and uh, I, I wanted to do it. He loved the script the way it was. And his only thought from my understanding was that if he could get Robin Williams to do it, he would do this in a second. Now, Tom is a big name at Universal, and they were delighted with the idea of Tom's doing it. It's kind of a transitional phase for him because it is a combination. It's got outrageous comedy, but it has very, you know, it has elements of drama and sadness, and he wants to see if he can juggle that, and I think he can. I think he's got the chops for it. It had a, a, a step that I wanted to make in, in my career, which was uh, doing a comedy that had a more reality-based tone and um, also had a more dramatic story. And, I, I early, when I read the script, I, I, I thought it was a great idea for a film, but I only wanted to do it with one person, and that was Robin, because it just screamed Robin Williams to me. Robin read the script, talked to Tom, signed on immediately. Tom, Robin got it. Robin said, I understand this human being, and this is somebody I could play. You know, when we were originally talking, just in dream terms about casting, Robin's is the first name you come up with. Robin's the wrong age. The patch was in his early 20s when he went to medical school, but. But who cares? <laughs> if you get Robin Williams, who cares? I couldn't let Robin Williams have a microphone and be Robin Williams in the movie. He had to be Patch. He had to be struggling at times and forming this philosophy at times. He couldn't have all the answers, and he couldn't be quite as funny as, um, as Robin Williams is on stage, as we know, explosively funny. I'm not afraid in terms of comedy. I mean, the only danger sometimes with he and I is how far we will go. He'll let you go way, way out, you know? I mean, he's... He's had that tradition with other comedies. It's harder for me to, to uh, trust the subtleties in this film, you know, to pull him back, to say, OK, Robin, stop being funny. There was one point where I had to walk on stage, and I felt like the death of comedy. I had to go on stage and say, you know, I'm the man with the hook, the cane, and pull him off stage. That, that's hard, because I just want to sit there and laugh like everybody else and enjoy it. But there's work to be done. The thing for him is why he's doing this movie is to see what he could do with the drama and also the other side of it the more serious scenes. He's trying to push the perception of himself that way. For me, what was important about the movie is that it had ideas of humor as a context to help prevent burnout in serving others. That not joke for joke's sake, but the creating an air and a atmosphere of levity and humor so that working hard to help make the world a better place is fun to do and not a sacrifice for your life, but in fact a, a jubilant thrill to help others. <laughs> choice to have Make-A-Wish children in the movie, people say, well, how can you do this? Because they're the real thing. Because they have a power and a dignity and a kind of a, there's such a grace that they have that I wanted to see that on film. The crew was all aware of what was going on. The kids themselves were aware of what was going on. The cast was aware of what was going on. And in moments like that, when joy is created, spontaneous joy is created, I believe that healing happens. There's a power in, in the, they had a joy in performing and being in the movie, the excitement of being in it. And the parents seem to say that they really lifted their